Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm just going to be giving a quick update on my STI. As you can see it still makes me smile. Pretty awesome car to drive. I've been loving it. Uh, I've got about 5,000 miles on it so I bought it back in March and so not that many miles overall. Um, you know I've always kind of lived close to where I work and now that I work at home, I don't really have a commute to work and back, so that's kind of one of the main things that takes up so many miles, and since I don't have that, yeah, I just don't put that many miles on it. So, yeah, at about 5,000 right now, um, and I figured I'd just kind of go over some of the things, uh, what I do like, what I don't like, and just some other comments about the vehicle that I've noticed so far since having it. Uh, the first thing I figured I'd touch on was fuel economy. Not that that makes any sense to do, but that's what I'm going to start with. Uh, and on these 5,000 miles, I've averaged 23 miles per gallon, uh, which is awful, yes. Um, and the car gets terrible fuel economy. It's rated 17 in the city, 23 on the highway. And, you know, people who say they don't care about fuel economy, they're only kidding themselves unless they're just, like, absurdly rich. But, I mean, I knew going into this that it wasn't going to get good fuel economy and I planned accordingly. You know, I knew that it wasn't going to get great fuel economy and so I'm not like thinking, oh my gosh, I made a terrible financial decision because I took the time to figure out how much it was actually going to cost to own and, you know, I can deal with it. But uh, its fuel economy isn't very good. That said, you know, it's, it's all-wheel drive, it's got limited slip diffs front and rear and it's got 300 horsepower. Um, there are other cars that are heavier that have the same horsepower that are also all-wheel drive and can get better fuel economy. So, you know, it's it's not like it's getting impressive fuel economy by any stretch of uh, it, but, you know, it, it's okay. And I have been able to get better than 23. Uh, I took a trip down to Crater Lake and back uh, where I tried not to put my foot down too much, which uh, is tempting, but, you know, I just wanted to see how good a fuel economy I really could get if I tried. Um, and I was managing to get I think it was about 500 miles total, and overall I believe I got 28 or 29 round trip. Uh, I also took this on my fuel economy test course that I do with all the cars that I test drive, and it seemed to be getting uh, 26 miles per gallon is what it got on the test course. So, you know, it is possible to do a little bit better than its highway rating of 23. Um, but that's basically what I've been sitting at since owning it. And uh, like I said, I mean, it's very tempting to just press your foot down because it's so fun. Um, some other comments, some things that I haven't been so thrilled with. I have had some rattling in it, uh, and there's something behind me that rattles and I haven't been able to find it. Um, and you know, that's just kind of one of those things that, especially on like cold mornings and the car hasn't warmed up yet, I seem to get it more uh, often. And you know, that's just one of the things that you gotta deal with. But you know, it's a lightweight car and they're trying to use lightweight materials all over the place in order to reduce the weight of the vehicle. So things like that happen, you'll get some rattles. It's not like they've sound deadened everything in it. You know, it's, it's not the quietest of rides. I'm on the highway now. Uh, doing about 55, 60, and you know, there's a decent amount of road noise. That said, it is raining, so that's basically what I'm hearing. Um, some other things, you know, a lot of people have mentioned that this is a very stiff ride, and you know, they don't want to drive a STI, you know, they prefer the WRX because it's a softer ride. And honestly, uh, you know, before I had started test driving cars and driving some other things out there, I was like, completely in disagreement with these people because to me it doesn't seem that rough but I'm coming from my Integra which happens to be on coilovers and is basically like riding a car with no suspension so in this you know you do get a lot of vibration through the seat through the steering wheel you do feel the road quite a bit uh, and it is stiff and I didn't realize that until I was driving like the Lexus uh, GS350, the Subaru Legacy, uh, the Volvo S60. All of those had really nice, comfortable rides where you don't feel the vibration through the seat and through the steering wheel uh, like you do with this. But you know, that's kind of what the point of this is. You know, it's a, it's a track monster. It's a, a rally car. It's not meant for, you know, a comfortable, luxurious ride. So I can't really fault it on being stiff. But yes, it is indeed stiff. And yes you know, you do feel quite a bit of the vibration. 
Uh, one of the other things that I'm not thrilled with is the Bluetooth dialing. Now, if you try and dial a phone number using the car system, it's completely useless. So if I say, you know, 555 and I'm trying to dial a number, it just puts in like one random number. It'll just be like nine and you're like, uh, forget this. So trying to use it to call people is worthless. Receiving calls, however, isn't bad at all. Um, someone calls you and your phone's connected, it'll say, hey, incoming call. You press the talk button and you talk like you normally would. It works great. Um, I've asked people, you know, how does it sound? And it's so far, so good. Everyone seems to think it sounds fine. They don't really notice that, you know, you're driving and talking to them. So that's a nice feature. So I guess one other thing that, you know, I'm not too fond of is there is a decent amount of turbo lag if you put your foot down at a low RPM. So if you put your foot down at a low RPM, you can sit there and you can watch the boost gauge slowly build up to 15 PSI before you start to, you know, rock it back in your seat. Though that said, if you're in a lower gear, you know, first or second, and you're at about 3,000, 3,500 RPM and you put your foot down, you will get a pretty good response. And then once you're above 4,000, I mean, it's a rocket. So turbo lag exists for sure. And there are times where you think when you're in a higher gear and you're on the highway or something, you try passing someone and the response isn't quite as fast as you might like. So that does exist. That said, it's plenty of power. You know, a lot of people are saying, uh, hey, are you gonna tune this? Are you gonna get the Cobb stage two or stage one and you know, tune it up to have a bit more power? Honestly, like I thought about it, but you know, it's, it's just not worth it to me for the 60,000 miles that I know I can have trouble free with a warranty uh, versus having a little bit more power. And you know, it is, it actually is a, a decent a bit more power. But that said, you know, this car is fast. Like people who are like, oh, the stock map sucks and it's a slow car. It's like, I don't know, what do you drive normally? Like it's, there aren't that many cars, uh, generally speaking, they get zero to 60 under five seconds or around five seconds for around the price range that you're paying for this. You know, if you're going for an all out sports car, yes, there's cars out there that do it. But for most cars, uh, you know, sedans that just happen to have nice big engines and things like that, you know, this car is much quicker than them and it has a pretty old engine. You know, this engine has been around for quite some time, which I was a little disappointed to see that they're still using the exact same engine with the 2015 Subaru. But with the Evo dying, you know, they don't really have much competition as far as what they're going for with this car. So it made sense to me that, you know, they're not necessarily going to increase the power because it's a fast car as is. So some of the things that I do like, I think the visibility of this car is fantastic. And that's one of the biggest things I kind of go for uh, in cars is cars that have really good visibility. My Integra probably has some of the best visibility you'll ever find in a car. And that's back in the day where safety regulations weren't quite as fierce and you could have smaller A pillars and it's basically just like a glass bubble on top of you and you can see everything really well. Well, I think this is a fairly good compromise, this hatchback, and it has excellent visibility all the way around. Uh, in front of you, behind you, you know, a nice large rear hatch where you can see out of. So I really do like the visibility of this car. The seats are also very comfortable. You know, a lot of people say the ride is stiff and that is true, but they do a good job of accommodating that stiff ride with these seats. These seats are actually really comfortable. So things that I like. There are also uh, some small little unique things that it does, which I really enjoy. Uh, just little, you know, minor things like the key fob. When you lock the door, it beeps once. If you lock the door and there's a door open or the hatch is open, it beeps like three or four times to let you know, hey, one of the doors isn't uh, fully closed. And that's actually pretty nice. You know, I was in my apartment and I'm close enough, my car's parked close enough to my apartment where I can lock it from the inside. So I locked it uh, and it beat three times and it's like, okay, you know, something's open. So I go out and check and the hatch was open. So I close it and, and I think that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, another thing it does, uh, the music fades on and off, you know, when you turn on the radio, I think that's a nice touch. You know, it just sounds good uh, to not have it be instantaneously loud or quiet. Uh, you know, a fade in and a fade out. I think that's a nice little touch. Um, one other thing, when you have the lights on, you know, a lot of cars have automatic lights. Uh, this one does not, but when you take the key out, even if you've left your lights on, it will turn your lights off, so you're not draining the battery. And I think that's a smart move. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's universal at this point or not, but I think 
you know, more cars are probably moving towards automatic lights, but I think that was a nice thing that they did. Another thing that I really like about this is the SI drive. You know, it really changes uh, how the car behaves when you change that. And I didn't think, you know, simply changing the throttle mapping uh, would change all that much, but it really does. You know, if you put it in the SI drive, it's just so much quicker to respond uh, to feedback from your foot when you press on the pedal versus uh, if you're in the intelligent mode, you know, you can put your foot down and it's not going to ramp up the RPMs that fast. Uh, and it also basically limits the boost. And that's something I've kind of noticed over time is that if I'm in intelligent mode versus sport or sport sharp and I floor it, uh, it, it's much slower to get to 15 PSI of boost. And if it does, you know, sometimes it won't even do that. So sometimes it'll just kind of float at around 10. So it does actually seem to kind of limit the boost uh, with the SI drive. And then if you put it in sport sharp, you know, when you put your foot down, it tries its hardest to get to 15 PSI and it gets there. So that's just one thing that I think is pretty cool that you can actually change the way the car drives. So I guess in closing, what do I like about this car? Uh, and it comes down to the power, the grip, and the sound. It's just a phenomenal experience driving this thing, even when it is pretty wet like it is right now. It just has so much grip to put the power down. It finds the wheel that has the grip and it sends it to it and you just launch, even when it's cold and wet like it is right now, which I wouldn't recommend kind of going all out on and I'm not by any means, but this car just launches. So there you have it. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.